skies of blue Clouds of white Bright blood of day Dark sacred light And I think to myself What a wonderful I see the trees of blue, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They're really saying I I hear babies cry I watch them grow They'll learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful world
workers here hope that beneath this rubble, some two stories down, there may be a survivor of Monday's earthquake. Uh, they say that they have detected signs of human life. They've brought life detectors in here and dogs in to investigate, but they are minimizing the expectations. They say that it is extremely unlikely, uh, but that they have heard something deep underground beneath that rubble and that they will continue to excavate until they can be sure uh, that there is nothing there or until they have brought something up. Now this is a site in the center of Akita, right next door to the historic center, which was of course very badly damaged during the earthquake. And uh, from this particular site alone, nine bodies were brought out and a tent was brought out alive. So of course, uh, some degree of hope that there is someone still buried there and still alive who rescuers will be able to uh, pull out alive. But as I said, uh, people here minimizing the chances of saying, although that would be a wonderful, or almost miraculous uh, development, it is extremely unlikely. Diana Magne, CNN, L'Aquila, Italy. And how sophisticated, Diana, would you describe this search and rescue operation? Well, I would say that this is something that the Italians are, uh, are, are, are used to and are doing a good job at. It. It, you know, this, this is a country that is crisscrossed with um, seismic fault lines. They are therefore uh, used to sending in rapid response units such as they have done. And I mean, the figures speak for themselves. 4,000 rescuers mobilized within uh, about 10 hours is uh, impressive. And from the, uh, uh, the, the, the people who are waiting, wrapped in blankets, waiting for loved ones, there have been food, water bought to keep them warm all day, blankets. So it is a fairly sophisticated operation. Uh, the question really is that, if, that, the, that the Italian media are asking right now is how could this have happened? Were buildings here uh, cured properly against uh, seismic activity? And that is a question that remains to be answered from the sort of scene that I'm looking at. It would appear not. And Diana, you mentioned at the end of your report there aftershocks and the very real possibility. What is being said and how are people being cautioned in L'Aquila and around there tonight? Well, there were several aftershocks shortly after, after the main quake itself at 3.30 this morning. Since then, there have not been so many tremors, so I think the concern is not uh, it is now not so much that this could happen again, but just how to look after the survivors and to ensure that uh, any survivors left in the rubble are pulled out. That, that is definitely the priority right now. I think that the fear that another big quake on that kind of scale could happen again is not really the main priority right now, Camilla. All right, Diana Magni reporting from L'Aquila. Well, where of people being pulled alive from the rubble may be energizing some of the rescue efforts. Earlier today, this survivor emerged from a space between giant slabs of concrete and steel. He was covered with dust, but still walking. It was an emotional moment when the grateful survivor embraced one of his rescuers and sobbed as others placed a jacket around his shoulders. Well, let's take a closer look now at the town at the center of the quake. L'Aquila is about 120 kilometers northeast of Rome. It's an historic city with many medieval buildings and about 70,000 inhabitants. L'Aquila is a university town, the capital of the Abruzzo region. U.S. President Barack Obama has offered his sympathy to victims of the quake. He was in Ankara for talks with the Turkish President Abdullah Gul. Speaking at a news conference, both leaders expressed sorrow over the tragic event. Also extending condolences to the victims was Pope Benedict XVI. A group of Italian scientists is on trial for manslaughter for failing to inform residents of an earthquake devastated city of the risks of such a quake. But a GNS scientist here says it's currently impossible to predict earthquakes and the trial is unjust. Emma Jolliffe reports. Seven Italian scientists and seismologists are facing charges of manslaughter for allegedly failing to warn residents in the town of L'Aquila of the risks of a devastating earthquake. A quake that killed 300 people and destroyed much of the town. The genius seismologist John Risto says earthquakes no one has ever successfully predicted an earthquake. He says the best seismologists can do is come up with probabilities and forecasts, as seen in Christchurch, where they're based on an aftershock sequence, or understanding how often a major fault line is likely to be active. 
Bristow's one of 5,000 international researchers who last year signed a petition supporting the Italian defendants. Something that they can present in court um, to say that other seismologists. Crede dunque per tutta la regione, ma per tutta l'Italia soprattutto. Eh, questa non è certamente una trasmissione come quelle di tutti i giorni. Lavoreremo in diretta per fornirvi più notizie possibili, più immagini, le state vedendo possibili, su questa tragedia che ha colpito l'Abruzzo. Primo collegamento con l'Aquila, per noi c'è Daniela Seneva, qui do la linea. Sì, buongiorno, noi siamo dinanzi alla casa dello studente che è stata completamente sventrata da questo terremoto pazzesco. Dentro ci dovrebbe essere una di quelle 14 vittime di cui avete parlato voi. Anche qui non si hanno conferme dei numeri, ma sicuramente sono numeri, eh, se non altri, importanti. E poi i conti di morti non si contano mai a numeri. È tutto un insieme di tragedie. Abbiamo visto gente scavare con le mani poco lontano di qui. Intanto sentite lo stilicidio delle sirene, delle ambulanze. Gente scavare con le mani perché un intero palazzo è crollato. Abbiamo visto gente tirata fuori in stato di shock ma abbiamo anche sentito che qualcuno alla chiamata non rispondeva in questo momento è arrivato anche l'esercito qui all'Aquila che cerca di dirimere un po' le operazioni difficili, difficilissime perché i sopporti non sono ancora arrivati nella loro totalità c'è gente, gente dappertutto da Teramo stanno arrivando le ambulanze che faranno l'ospedale da campo a Piazza Darmi ci sono padri che chiamano a gran voce i nomi dei loro figli dentro questa casa dello studente, dentro i palazzi, vi assicuro che è uno scenario di guerra e se mai è un giornalista che ha concesso di commuovere di questa è la situazione della commozione e anche della rabbia, vi dico anche che in molti tra di noi colleghi di altre televisioni hanno parlato di quanto non si fa rimane anche noi. Una notizia crediamo di poterla confermare. Un processo che creates a trial that creates many problems because it affects both the personal and the collective ideas of scientists who had freely expressed their opinion when asked to assess the situation. Seven scientists and officials are now on trial, charged with manslaughter. A group of 5,000 international experts have signed a petition condemning the court action as an unprecedented legal attack on science. The trial has been adjourned until next month. Emma Alberici, ABC News. Okay. Oh, anche la casa della cuba. Respira, respira.